neza mwese uko mwicaranye ngira ngo mwaza gufatanya mu gasemurirana abata kugira ngo mvuge mu cyongereza mbabaza taza kugira ikibazo cyo kunsemurira cyangwa se ndabivanga aho biba ngombwa uh first of all let me start by thanking our guest uh, speaker uh, madam obi is a quesiri uh, has uh, introduced a friend of our country a friend of many individuals here in the room and also for uh, a very good presentation uh, that befits this moment that uh, uh, we are celebrating uh, the purpose and uh, the life of Unity Club. Uh, for Unity Club, I wanted to congratulate you and also thank you uh, for keeping uh, these ideas and uh, the mission for which uh, the club was formed uh, going. So thank you very much. You know, Unity Club, uh, and even by that name of Unity, they carry uh, means a lot to us to the country, to our history, to uh, generations uh, ahead. But you also helped me, uh, the current person uh, in this position, uh, the president, You know, you helped me to have uh, around 200 cabinet ministers at once. <laughs> you would normally not fit 200 people in one room as cabinet ministers, but every time we have uh, 15, 20, 25, the biggest number we have had is 30. But actually, because of Unity Club, I have around 200. <laughs> so that, that is, uh, uh, I don't know whether it was intended that way or it was just, uh, we arrived at it by a coincidence of sort, but nonetheless, it's a good thing. So, and of course, that leads me to say that most of these things, and I think. Uh, Madame Obi said it uh, quite well. We, we are at a point where we are able to see or understand the good 
that come that can come from uh, people at the same time as we our history tells us we know what bad things people are capable of doing. So we have this, uh, for me, the, the, the other narrative, the two narratives that exist about the country, it's more about two narratives rather than two countries. There are no two Rwandas, but there are two narratives about Rwanda, and we can... Uh, uh, so we, 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 then you can try and understand what that means. If you look at back in history and the tragic history which happened because uh, uh, I would want to say we Rwandans really allowed it to happen. That doesn't mean uh, there is no foreign hand in it. Maybe it was actually even a 50-50. Uh, but there's always a foreign hand in everything, and we'll come to that uh, as, as we go forward. But for the purpose of us being able to understand our responsibilities and therefore standing up to these challenges, I don't put much emphasis on the foreign hand. I, I, I just want to see what we are capable of doing and uh, what we are we could be able to avoid doing to, to allow ourselves uh, to be on the path of, of destruction as, as it has been uh, in our case. So having these two sides, people can sink to the lowest point because of uh, mistakes they are capable of making. Uh, driven by all kinds of interests, ideas, and even when mistaken, they don't realize they are mistaken, or they think it is in their interest, but actually by going against somebody else's interest, you may be going against your own. So it, it, it therefore, we, 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 there is uh, this sorting out of ideas and actions based on those ideas as we go forward. So destruction, rebuilding, this is what we have seen. We've been there, in between. We witnessed total destruction almost. We've witnessed their rebuilding, which is not complete and maybe not even near to being complete, that is rebuilding and to a point where I want to be, but at least we've been there right in the middle and it's up to the people in this room, the leaders in this room, to play our part to continue the journey of building the country, not only that we want, but that we deserve. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, we live in a world that is very uh, complex, later on complicated. You know, even in, um, if, if it exists, that is, even in a totally free world, let me assume there is, you have people who want to think, and rightly so, differently, and they're entitled to that. 
But ultimately, what happens? Is it that you are free, therefore you are free to do anything, anytime? Still, that is okay. But let me say that is okay. But what is the outcome in the end? If everyone, and, and you see, everyone can lay uh, claim to the fact that they are actually right. Because they are free, then they are free to think the way they think, behave the way they behave. But in the end, with hundreds of people, thousands, millions, if you think like that, and rightly so, what happens at the other end? Because everyone, by thinking differently, also thinks they are right. So if all of them are right and are thinking differently, so what happens at the other end? When it is supposed to be brought together, or how is it brought together so that for the common good of all of those, then you have something as an outcome that is in their best interest. That's how complex it is. Because everybody is free to think differently and thinks they are right to think differently. But if you all act differently based on that freedom to think and act, then the outcome has to be thought about. It must be an outcome that comes addressing our interests commonly, all of us, together. Uh, the story is about Rwanda. I, I still maintain there is only one Rwanda, but there are two stories about it. And there are two stories about it that people feel entitled to, or to think, or to see that way, and that's okay. But ultimately, we must have a Rwanda. A Rwanda that represents the common good of Rwandans who think differently, who act differently, and even who want to be different. So there has to be a way of channeling these differences, these freedoms, so that a country like ours continues stably on the path of building stability, and in that stability, people continuing to be able to feel free, to think, and act differently. That, that's how complicated it is. Let me bring it back a little bit to our Unity Club. And why I was saying I was happy that It has continued to expand. It has continued to hold the people together. Those serving, those who have served and left and are doing other things, meaning in the government. You know, when I said I'm happy that we could be having 200 members of a cabinet, which practically has been impossible to have at one time, at one, any one given time, but we have it now in a different form. 
you know, let me tell you a little bit of uh, my experience, at least at my level and, and this. See, in, in appointing cabinet ministers, for example, again, it's the same thing. There are probably thousands, hundreds of thousands of people who think and feel that they should be cabinet ministers. And they have a right to think like that. They have a right to be cabinet ministers. But you can't have a thousand cabinet ministers. And you know, so we used to have a cabinet, say from the beginning, we have uh, 20 members. Changing one of the 20 and say, there is another one coming in, maybe you can, uh, that was a problem. Somebody says no. Or when they go, they go disgruntled, they are not happy that they have been removed from a cabinet. Definitely they are not happy that someone else is coming in. And by the way, some would even start by thinking that this is something they are completely entitled to. In fact, in some cases, I remember I used to talk to some of them uh, when I knew they were there outside grumbling and unhappy about it. Some, I used to talk to some of them. And I would engage them in a discussion saying, I said, by the way, you've been in the cabinet, you're not happy that you've left the cabinet. A couple of things. How did you actually come to cabinet? Is it something you just uh, felt you wanted and uh, you were entitled to and walked in and became one? Or, or from somewhere, you were not a cabinet member before. You only became when you were made a member of cabinet. So how would you complain that you are leaving cabinet when you don't fully account for how you actually came into cabinet? <laughs> and the second thing would be, if, if everyone else th thought like you did, then we would, have, we would be having chaos because Everybody else who is not a member of cabinet at one point, and there are more, <laughs> there are millions who, who think they can uh, be members of cabinet. Therefore, they should be creating chaos out there, agitating, and holding somebody responsible for not creating a situation where they have become cabinet members. You would just that way of thinking or behavior would simply create chaos. Um, so one way of, uh, I'm, I'm thankful for the creation of uh, Unity Club was it contained, it helped us manage these unjustified or unnecessary grievances. Because the <laughs> <laughs> because everyone con continued to belong. It, 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 to belong, it, it became a family, a family of leaders who, and their spouses this time, who belonged to this society of leaders, leaders in or out of cabinet. 
So it, and, and it underscored the essence and the strength of unity for a purpose, for a common good among people. Still, it will never be a perfect situation. Absolutely not. But it is a better situation <laughs> than having everybody just complaining about nothing or, or things that they shouldn't be complaining about. So it's, it's everything there is. For it, if there is an improvement, you are happy and you can live with that improvement that keeps happening. Now, it comes the more complicated thing now when it comes to politics and the way we manage the politics. And I will talk about the, the, there are issues that are Rwanda specific. You see, like uh, the references that were made, uh, or what we've gone through, and, and up to now what we still go through. Uh, you know, I remember, I think, I don't know whether you caught it properly, but I remember somebody, I think it was Tubman, who said, uh, talked of how he had, he had freed, he had set free a thousand slaves. And then he said uh, he could actually have freed a thousand more had, it, had they believed it. If in their minds they believed they could be free. <laughs> uh, if they wanted to be free. So what I'm saying here is, and, and this is for Rwanda, but it's for Africa. In a way, the lack of freedom would not be that actually the situation doesn't provide it. It is that you even don't give it to yourself. And instead, we have continued to be slaves in actual fact, even I think uh, on the stage here when people are talking about colonialism, the colonial mentality still drives our thinking and our actions. Because the narrative comes from out there about us, about how we should be seeing ourselves, or the interpretation of our own selves and behavior and how we live our lives. And then we actually start believing that we are like that. Let me, for a practical purpose, say something like this. You see, these people who write stories about us, about uh, dictator Kagame, about uh, uh, lack of freedom, about uh, being intolerant to criticism and so on. I, I start with one thing. Uh, when I had just uh, uh, started uh, tweeting, that was 2010. 2009, one uh, European uh, And, and by the way, when I say one European, this European doesn't even have to be a credible person. He just has to be a European. And then what he says about me 
is going to define me. <laughs> you see what I mean? And somebody tweeted this, talking about Rwanda, talking about me, and you know, saying, you know, this. So because I was on Twitter, I actually answered back and said, no, so and so, I think you are mistaken. That's not me. That's not Rwanda. That's not our politics. So, and we went back and forth arguing, and then in the end, his conclusion and others in that part of the world was, you know, you see, uh, Kagame is intolerant of criticism. Even when they wrote it, I answered the back, I said, no, actually you are more intolerant to criticism because When I disagreed with you and gave you facts, you are now saying, so you were criticizing me. You not only were you criticizing me, you were actually abusing me. Now, when I explain, when I tell you what I think, also are my facts are the facts about this particular case. Now it has turned out that all of you gang up to say I am intolerant. But, but you are more intolerant because you are not listening to my opinion. <laughs> so, but, and I'm sure there would be Africans on the side who would agree with them because they are who, who they are, and that's what I think is absolute uh, wrong mentality. That they are right because they are from where they come from. So the, the, in other words, they have set a standard that if so-and-so from the one side says this African is like this, then we must all accept it for a fact. And you cannot answer back, because if you do, then you are intolerant to criticism. Uh, during these last elections, You know very well, while the Rwandans were having one kind of debate, the outside world was having another kind of debate. Meaning, how dare Rwandans think of having Kagame again as their president? Because this was the basis of the argument. And uh, of course, I would see Twitter everywhere, people arguing. So even some of them actually came to see me. Some friends out there who good friends, even sent by other friends or, or by governments <laughs> to come and talk to me and say, you see, so I would listen. In fact, in one, in one discussion, the Minister of Foreign Affairs was there. And the advice to me was, oh, by the way, uh, why don't you actually do maybe uh, what Putin did, the one of Russia? Meaning, can't you go allow somebody else To, to be there and you can, behind the scenes, you know, do whatever you want to do, and then at some point come back. I said, okay, one advice I have understood, I've listened. Uh -huh. What are the alternatives? Oh, they say, okay, another alternative is, why don't you, among these people here, select and sometimes they would even name names. Why don't you have so and so actually replace you and then you stay behind and you start, you know, you guide them from outside. Uh, and and I say, oh, okay, that's number two. So another one? 
Actually, there was, no, an, an, there was no other one until I told them what it was. Because I told them, I said, you've given me two choices. You're telling me that I can go this route, the first one which you said. I, I behave like somebody somewhere else in another situation. Or uh, I actually look for a replacement myself and say, you Uh, and also start operating that one from behind. And it is acceptable to you. I said, but you are champions of democracy. You, you, you teach us so much about democracy. I didn't know that in, 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 in the democracies as old as yours, you actually practice it like that. Meaning, <laughs> you want me to do this, or you want me to choose, or you actually choose because they're already naming people who could step in my shoes. I said, is this how you practice democracy in your place? Is this the democracy you want to teach us? I said, there's one, only one thing you have forgotten that is even more important, or most important of all. You haven't told me what you have learned about or heard from Rwandans. Where are they in all of this? You haven't talked about them. So in other words, they are not actually thinking about Rwandans. No. They are thinking about leaders, you, we, we here in the room, and how we can be manipulated and manipulate each other, and that's it. It's not about the country of Rwanda. It's not about the people. They tell you freedoms, they tell you democracy, they tell you all kinds of things. They're not thinking about the people. That's the practical reality. They are thinking about their own interests and the interests they can achieve by manipulating leaders of our societies. That is the reality of the matter. There are no two ways about it. Now, even this other, the other time, so during those elections, you know what happened. So, but we ignored it. But by the way, for those who may not know, because I think People need to understand even what happens here. First of all, one thing I would want everybody to go away with, we actually never pretend. We tell you, we, we tell you the thing as it is. You like it, you don't like it, that's your business. So the first thing about us, and, and for me, in this struggle I have been in, and uh, what may even differentiate us from other situations is because of leaders. You know, there are these great leaders. Uh, the Mandela that was talked about, or, uh, Gandhi or other people, they struggled. They stood for certain ideals. But it happens that we have struggled differently. Differently. And I know one of the things that attracts uh, problems for some of us And I don't know how to equate it or differentiate it. I can't say sitting in prison is better than uh, being daily exposed to bullets every day. I, 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 for five years in Uganda during the struggle, I fought in Uganda for five years. Every single day, I didn't know I would live to another day. 
then added four and a half in Rwanda. I never knew I would live to another day. I was there. So I could have been in a prison here, hoping that I would see another day, depending on somebody to have mercy on me, or if he doesn't give an order that I get killed the next day. But that is different. So because for us, we've lived a life where either you are shooting or being shot at every single day. Every single day is a firefight. Well, that's not cool. It doesn't sound normal that you would hold a gun and shoot people for your freedom. People don't, I can understand journalists, I can understand human rights groups, I can, for them, uh, it's some uh, way that is not normal or natural that you preserve life and promote it. No, I, I did that by shooting, firing guns, and being fired at every single day of nine and a half years. Five in Uganda, four and a half here. I could have died on the first day, <laughs> and that would have been uh, maybe a better story to write about, or it wouldn't have been a story at all. <laughs> uh, so, and then this last uh, time, or every single day, I one time had to tell this guy of uh, human rights who is always abusing me and abusing Rwanda. He said, fellow, I stand in a better place for human rights than you do. For you, it is just, you know, you're just talking about it. No, for me, I have risked my life. I have put my life on the line. Because of my freedoms that I had to fight for, together with other Rwandans, because of our freedoms and the freedoms of our people. I cannot, I cannot have this, these fellows who just, you know. And the world they come from is the world that when people are being killed here at the height of genocide, they pulled out all the forces that were here of the UN, 6,000 to 250. And then you, you tell me you care about people's lives? You tell me about freedom, about democracy, about all kinds of nonsense? Yes, they pulled them out, and I was here fighting. And then they write stories, you know, Kagame, Kagame, a violator of human rights, or a dictate, dictating to who? These Rwandans, you can ask them. Leaders here, ask your own people you come from. First of all, if they hadn't been the ones to ask me to stay longer, I was happy, I was ready to go home. I have a home. I have a home now, I have Rwanda. I fought for it. I would have gone home long ago. Because I have a home. And I have a conscience. I have a right. A right to stand up and tell anybody to their face that they are no better than me. Anybody. And, and I, I've been brought up 
in a manner, politics, ideological, and otherwise, that you can't put a finger in my eye. I'll kick it. Because <laughs> nobody can. Yes. Now that I even have a base, a home, from which I can fight, I'll fight you. <laughs> so, forget about these uh, things that, you know, have the, the pharaohs who killed. This, this genocide that you hear about, which these Rwandans also carried out, because many Rwandans did. But the actual architects, the ones who engineered this, are these outsiders who, who, who teach us about freedoms, about human rights, about, they are the ones who engineered the killings of, of uh, and they are the ones who hold the pen because uh, they have uh, the power to control the global media and, and so on, and write stories about us. You will never see them write the story about how Rwanda was abandoned by the UN, by these countries that have lessons for everybody about freedoms. They will never write about that. They will write about me. They will write about the victims. The victims are the perpetrators. And when it comes to politics, it's no different. When we are managing our countries, when we are managing our own countries, they are there hovering over us, telling people, you know, what they are doing is wrong, they should be doing that, they should be doing that, but you are hovering over me, telling me what to do. What, what did you leave behind for me to, to clean up? It's only a mess they left behind that you have to clean up. And then left us also with <laughs> fellow Rwandans whom they had almost dehumanized, crushed beyond being people who can stand up and believe in themselves and say we can get ourselves out of here until they have had to come and feed them. When we came here uh, in, in the 90s, this country was being fed by World Food Program and USID. The agriculture was nowhere. Actually, our agriculture, our country's agriculture, never grew, had never registered growth as a part of the economy until 2007. That is the first time in the life of this country that agriculture started growing. But those and us <laughs> were happy to have a relationship where for us we sit back and they bring food rations to us and they give us. And if you say, no, I want to please uh, promote agriculture, they say, no, 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 this man is a dictator. <laughs> because, because you're taking, you know, this, this is a, Long story we are used to, we know it. And I run why Africans don't, uh, why, why we should have a short memory. It's something we've almost grown up in, something that has, we have experienced in every day life. So unity, fellow leaders, in any shape or form, is very critical for us. And it's not just unity. It can't be unity as an end in itself. It's unity that you have forged 
and are ready to use for a purpose. For a purpose. To ensure that the people of Rwanda feel secure in and by themselves. It is the first time in the recent history of this country, in our time, that you have a Rwanda where citizens sleep in their homes and not bothered that somebody will come to their home to ask which ethnic group they come from, which part of the region, and, and, and by the way, it's not just asking. They will take, take them and kill them. <laughs> it's not about even just asking, no. It's the first time somebody can sleep in a house and not even bother about closing the door. I mean, I'm not just telling the story. Facts are there to prove me right. It's facts about what every single person among you and others out there have experienced in their lives. Where you are not sure that somebody is not coming to take your life. And openly, and without any fear of accountability. These same people who write stories, the other story about Rwanda, the bad one, know it. They've been a part of it. But they write these things about us. As I said, somebody, you know, to talk about uh, the leaders of Rwanda in any way and, and be believed doesn't have even to be a credible person. You just have to come from this society that, and, and as uh, Obi said, you see, we are all created by God. Between me and God, I don't know anybody who can just stand above me and say, there's no way. Absolutely not. <laughs> I can't, I can't. Well, if it is here in our society, the structures of management, if uh, you are my president, I used to have presidents, I have to, used to have people telling me what to do, and I would, I would respect them. I would respect them. If there is anything I've learned in my life, I, I, I have respect for people, I respect my life, my, myself. But there is even what that person who is above me can't tell me to do, and I do it. They can't tell me to do wrong you can't tell me to terrorize about people, or to kill them, or to do, and I do, no, never. Not because you're my boss. No, when it comes to that, then it is between me and God. In between there is nobody else. Absolutely. Between me, or between what I have identified as the truth and God, there is nobody who stands in between. So unity is for the purpose of, because every individual, every one of us, has something in them to give. There is something in them that is good. So we want to harness that bring it together, and use it to build our country for the better and for the future, our children, our grandchildren. 
That's, that's, that's the essence of unity. That's the essence of these structures that help us create that togetherness. So the other things of feeling unhappy or these, those are secondary, that you have been dropped out of a cabinet and somebody is the whole day moody and angry and even when you greet them, they can't answer back. That's a simple thing. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can forgive those who did it to you, but you can also give your, forgive yourself because <laughs> you don't need that. You don't deserve it. You don't deserve to lose it. A lot of kilograms of your weight, just being angry that you've been dropped. No, life is life does not start and end in the cabinet. Life should be looked at in a much bigger sense. Life is about all of us. Life is about our country. Life is our neighbors across the continent. Life is about those we can work with from the rest of the world, all to improve ourselves and make better uh, the life of everyone. So before I live uh, an, another life, that we all aspire to when our time is always up with, for everybody to always be up at some point. Uh, so before I worry about that, by the way, or the best way to worry about that is to worry about the life here. How well you have done how well you have done here will determine how well you live there. <laughs> Don't you think? You can't tell lies here and pretend and do wrong things and then expect. No. So let's start here and I thank you very much.